Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. So that breaking news out of Memphis where police have just released video of the beating of a man who died as police tried to take him into custody. And KTV's Christian Captain has been looking now over that video and joins us now live from the newsroom. Christian, uh, we know that this video is graphic. In fact, officials who had previously seen the footage called it appalling. Uh, tell us more about what it shows. Yeah, certainly appalling, shocking. There are lots of words that you can use to describe this. That is exactly what we'd heard from Tyree Nichols' family and from the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation in anticipation of this video being released. And as expected, the video shows the brutal encounter as five Memphis police officers were trying to take Tyree Nichols into custody. And we want to warn viewers that the video is graphic. Now, the video that we are showing you first is a video at the second scene. This is after uh, Nichols was initially uh, pulled over. And in that video, you can see he was already on the ground after he was pulled over at that other location. The officers in the video repeatedly punch and kick Nichols over and over again in the video. Uh, at one point, you can see they stand him up, they hold his hands behind his back and begin punching and hitting him and wrestle him down to the ground again. At various points in time in the video, they also kick him. Now, body-worn camera of the same incident, uh, we're able to actually hear what the officers are saying in that very uh, scene that you are watching right there. Those officers repeatedly order Nichols to, quote, give them their hands. They pepper spray him punch him and kick him over and over again, wrestling his hands behind his back. Now, in an earlier video, we saw police initially pull over Nichols. You can see in body cam video on that. Uh, we are reviewing that video right now where they pull Nichols over and within seconds, they draw firearms and begin shouting at him to get out of his car and lie on the ground. At that initial scene, numerous officers wrestle him to the ground at one point, Nichols says to the officers, I am on the ground, and man, you guys are doing a lot. The officers then threaten to tase him, and at some point, Nichols breaks free and runs away from those five officers. One of the officers at that initial scene fires his taser at him. It's unclear if he strikes Nichols, who has broken away. The officers' demeanor change as they radio for backup and then discuss amongst themselves how Nichols got away. All of that, again, happening on the first two minutes of that body cam video. Now, we did hear from uh, Nichols' mother earlier, who had asked for peace as people see this video. She says that she knows it's going to be difficult to watch and that she did not watch it herself, but she is asking for uh, justice for her son as people review this video for the first time. And I want to say to the five police officers that murdered my son, you also disgraced your own families when you did this. But you know what? I'm going to pray for you and your families. And again, we're giving you a little context here. Again, that this all started January 7th when police pulled Nichols over on suspicion of reckless driving at around 8.30 in the evening. The police initially said that Nichols ran from that scene and he was injured as officers arrested him. He was taken to a Memphis area hospital after he complained about quote, shortness of breath. Three days later, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation said that Nichols had died by last Sunday. Memphis police said an internal investigation was underway. And then last Friday, Memphis PD said its officers had violated policy and fired all five officers involved. Those five officers were arrested yesterday and charged with second degree murder. Now, some cities here in the Bay Area are already preparing for the possibility of protests. In the last two days, I've had discussions with San Francisco police officers and with sheriff's deputies who all say they are on alert. In San Francisco, you can see them there, barricades around San Francisco's Hall of Justice with a narrow gap to limit how many people can approach the building at one time. Now, we also heard that there is a solidarity rally planned for Sunday in Oakland, and we are already hearing about planned protests in Chicago and Washington, D.C., and we will, of course, continue to monitor local developments here. Again, uh, all I can tell you from having seen that video for myself, it, it lives up to all of the descriptions that we've heard of it so far. Uh, Heather Frank, the words that you've heard so far about appalling video, shocking, uh, it is that and so much more. I guess so, uh, after, uh, after watching what you just saw as well. Uh, Christian Captain, live in our newsroom. Thank you.
Are you ready? Everybody, it's Jeff. Good to see you all here today. Today is Friday. I record this now. Friday, Friday, and uh, it's been a real nice day here in Maine. It hasn't been uh, very cold. The sun was out. The snow was melting. And uh, hey, you can't beat that, right? <laughs> Um, but tomorrow we are supposed to get some, a little bit of snow, partly sunny. Uh, so, you know, it's <laughs> it's still winter and it lingers. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I hate to say this, but it's been a violent week here in America, hasn't it? Uh, we've had at least three major shootings this week alone here uh, across the country here. The, I guess the most recent one was out in California at ha uh, Half Moon Bay. Uh, you got seven dead people here. Uh, that's the third mass shooting in just eight days. Okay, just eight days. Um, and uh, according to you know people that keep track of this stuff, we've had 39 mass shootings in just January alone. 39. That's almost every day. That's like every day spread out. You know, maybe like two two shootings a day in America. You know, since the start of the damn month. <laughs> okay. 39. You know, I, I wonder what other countries must think about that when, when a, a factoid like that goes out onto the web and people in the other in other countries read that and say, my God, you know, what kind of a country is that? I mean, it's worse than friggin' Jerusalem. You know, or it's, you know it's, it's worse than uh, being in Iraq or, I, you, know, uh, uh, you know, or in one of these... Uh, despot countries here that are you know out there in the world i mean christ you don't have as many killings like that out there i mean it's safer to to go live in these other places than it is here it's probably safer to go live in ukraine than it is here i mean <laughs> uh and on top of that you had this this police brutality uh thing happen with uh, tyree nichols you know uh beaten to death by five cops you know, and I seen the video. I mean, YouTube has got like many different angles because a lot of people were, were recording that on their phones. And so there's like a lot of different angles to see this incident happen. And I'm sure that, you know, uh, investigators have probably looked at a lot of it and they've got enough angles to know uh, whether or not it was justified. And, you know, to the common clod out there, it wasn't justified. Okay, they... they the guy was a subdued on the ground, cuffed, and still five cops surrounded him and kicked the living shit out of him, pounded his head into the pavement, uh, and he died from the injuries, okay? He died from the injuries. Now, I'm going to say this here, okay? And we, we all know that this, this kind of problem in America is not new. It's been going on for, for a long time, okay, with cops. And I think it really kind of started during, after 9-11. Uh, I really think because George Bush kind of sent down a decree uh, about boosting national security. And part of that package was, was militarizing our police even more, okay? And a lot of the police stations weren't prepared at first to gear up that way okay uh, but over time they did and now you got a lot of police out there that look like national guardsmen okay riding around with uh, bulletproof vests on and and they carry many weapons not just a handgun but they got automatic weapons <laughs> okay they have all that stuff 
uh, <clears throat> and their protocols have been changed to approach every situation as though it's going to end up in a shooting. Okay, so when you get people coming back from military service, uh, they were probably MPs or something like that, and they want a job in the civilian world, uh, they're going to gravitate back probably towards the police because their experience is there. And these people are going to bring in the attitude of more militarization uh, with the people, their co-workers around them who didn't serve in the military, okay? But the police are always going to grab those that did because they don't require as much training. What they need to be is sort of uh, uh, dialed back, <laughs> okay, from what they learned while in the service, which I think they think is easier than it is to dial up to get somebody in that position. But... Uh, these people, like, I guess they figure they're, they're a shoe in If you've been in the military or something like that, come on, come on down, okay? We'll take you, uh, the police. And so what we got probably, and I think in a lot of situations, are policemen uh, who are keyed up to being, you know, you know military, and they're approaching situations uh, with the intent in mind of subduing people with violence as much as they can and if they're not listened to they feel like they're justified in killing somebody uh, to make them obey all right now there's an uh, there's a race a racial aspect to what happened here with with Tyree because Tyree was black and the five cops that beat him to death were also black okay and so we can I think we could say at least in this situation that it wasn't a racist thing okay what we can say is that it was a failure of training uh, or these were just bad cops, okay, on the force. And when you got five bad cops all working together that commit the same crime, uh, there's a problem, a very extensive problem there. And you have to wonder how many others, other bad cops are there on that force down in, uh, what state was it? I can't remember now, but... Uh, how many other cops are that were in there who weren't part of that mess and didn't get, you know, kicked off the force? How many others are, are there? What you know? How many others are left who probably do the same damn thing if if they if they could swap positions with one of those cops? So we have a we have a police enforcement problem in parts of the country as well as a police racist problem in other parts of the country. That really narrows down the field, doesn't it, to how many good cops there still are. Because the good cops, I think, and a lot of times witness these bad things happening and they don't really say anything because of fear, you know. Because, you know, a lot of these bad cops hang together like a gang. That's the way it was with Drew Peterson, if you remember that clown. <laughs> okay, the people he worked with were afraid of saying anything against him uh, when they knew he was, you know, doing peculiar things and you know his wives disappearing and you know and him chasing after kids that were young enough to be his daughter okay you know they 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 fear him and they kind of create this cabal inside the police department where they they watch each other's backs and they do so because of the alpha in the group that will do something to them in some way because they know he'll get away with it uh so Apparently, you know, that's not such, you know, a, a rare thing. It happens in a lot of police forces in the country because, hey, you know, it happens to people that work in anything, like making donuts. I mean, you hang around with people that you work with, right? I mean, because, you know, why, why, uh, when you're working around other people, you can't help it but talk to them, right? It's, it's a social thing as well as a, a workplace thing. So people without really thinking about it, make gangs wherever they go, wherever they make, uh, you know, wherever they work or wherever they do, you know. And so it kind of happens that way. Uh, and, you know, that's one of the things I used to hate about school was that, you know, everybody had to be in a clique. But when you think about it, uh, people don't do anything unless they find somebody that has some of the same interests. And it's sort of like, uh, you know, Every, it kind of spreads that way. It's like a virus. If everybody, if somebody has like the same interest, they kind of move into the, the into the gang, as it were. Um, 
and and uh, you know, like I said, I, I never really liked that, you know, as you know, uh, people are all into the same thing, and it gets boring hearing other people talking about the things you like when you already like it. You don't need to hear it. You don't need to have it resold to you. Uh, I'd like to hear from other people with other interests and stuff like that. Um, but that's that's kind of like what it is. And so we'll take now going back to the police force. Uh, you know, it's a big click thing there. I would imagine it was when I was in the military. Okay, um, I mean you you had people who stuck together because of their race. You had people who stuck together because of the way the place they worked. Uh, you had people who stuck together because of their rank. I mean, there's it's the military is full of cliques. Okay, it, it really is. I mean, it's just a very gang oriented kind of thing. Even though we're, they're all working in the same kind of job. There's sub jobs in the job, okay, that people work and they click to, okay. So it's you, it's not something you can stop in the police. Well, I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. You can't stop that from happening. That's human nature to be around because it's like a, a way of being safe, you know. I think it goes all the way back to our caveman days when people used to gather together to get food and things like that because they all had the same needs, you know. And so we've been, it's in our, it's ingrained in our DNA to be clicky, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but when you have people coming together uh, and they're doing this because they, they find humor or pleasure in breaking the law while they're trying to enforce the law, uh, that's where you have a problem because these people are not supposed to be clicky because they want to beat people up. They're supposed to be clicky because they want to protect other people from crime why can't they come together for that why do these cops have to come together uh, in order to pound people's head into the pavement or kick them to death you know or or do something to them because they're black or they're white or they're Hispanic or they're Jewish or they're this or they're that you know why can't these people just be clicky coming together because they are uh, you know policemen Ain't that enough? You know, isn't being a policeman or a policewoman enough to feel like you belong in there? I mean, why do you, I don't understand why they got to have this. I mean, to me, it seems stupid. It's like uh, painters, okay? People who paint pictures. Uh, why have a subsect of painters who paint just oceans <laughs> click together to do that? I mean, everybody in there is painting pictures, right? You know what I'm saying? Why can't that be the click? Why does it have to be even more, you know, I, I don't know. You don't, I don't know if you know what I'm, what I'm getting at, but it seems to me like uh, it's ridiculous, okay? I think it's ridiculous. We can't stop people from, from uh, ganging together on things, okay? But we sure as hell can say, look, if you're going to come together over crimes like this, people getting, we don't want you here, okay? Get the fuck right out of here. We're, you know... We're taking you out of the off the force. We don't need that. We'd rather be un, we'd rather be undermanned than overmanned and have dead bodies all over the fucking city. Okay, it's just it seems to me like that's the way it should be. Okay, especially if you want to be a policeman, because like I said, when when I was in the military, there were clicks and clicks within clicks. I mean, that's just the way it was, and it, you could not you could not fucking uh, prevent it, because otherwise you're always the outsider. If you don't want to be part of it, you're always an outsider. They don't know who you are. They don't know what you're about, okay? And if they don't see you uh, hanging around with somebody, doing the same things they're doing, then they can't identify with you. They can't connect to you, okay? That's the big problem, you know, that I saw when I was in the military, is they people desperately need to have followers, <laughs> okay? Um, and it just it seemed crazy uh, that way. And it seems to me like it's the same way in the police because the police, in a way, is sort of like a military. You got rank, you got your stages of authority, you got weapons, you got people on the street going after crime. I mean, it's like policing after a war and stuff like that. Same goddamn thing. So you have, you know, this going on in the police, and it's just like in the military. And that's why I think a lot of people in the military will drift into that line of work because they they're used to it they know you know you don't have to really train them they've had the training they know what to do okay you just got to dial them back so they won't go over the over the line because it's not military anymore it's civilian now and there's a whole other new set of rules you got to follow but 
for these five cops, all of them doing the same thing to the same person, I mean, that was definitely a gang mentality right there. Okay, these, these cops uh, were all together on this. Uh, it wasn't like an individual cop or a cop and his partner doing it. It was a whole bunch of cops all doing this together. Okay, so that right there is a gang. Now, the other part of this story is that the speed of justice moving here against the five cops, or former cops now, is very interesting. And I asked the question, would, if those five cops were white, would the wheels of justice be moving at the speed it is now against them? Because uh, there's also the other aspect that if they're black cops, they're expendable. <laughs> Who cares, right? Um, so it's easy to throw them under the bus because, you know, they're prejudiced against them anyway. Whether, they're, whether they wear the uniform or not, there's always going to be those people in there who don't give a shit if you wear the uniform or not. You might as well be wearing a uniform or, a, you know, a, a, of some other country, okay? They don't care. If they don't like black people, it ain't going to matter what uniform you're wearing. So there's, there's a certain aspect that I know of police officers who are, you know, that bigoted where they could care less what happens to those five cops. So, you know, like I said, they're just... Uh, I think the wheels of justice feel free to move on this as as good as they want because the victim was black and the cops were black. All right? They don't care. So I, I think these cops are going to get the worst of uh, punishment that, you know, that's there. I mean, they're, they're the police union. Where I mean, where the hell have they been through all this? There's no union talk or anything like that uh, for these cops. Uh, I just feel like they, they can't wait to throw these guys under the bus and then set an example like, see, we're fixing things in the police, okay? Uh, we punished those five guys there for doing what they did. See, we're, we are fixing the problem in the police in this country, you know? And I think that's all what it is. It's just for show. You know, they're trying to calm down the public. But at the end of the day, they still sacrificed a bunch of people they didn't like, okay, just to get them off the force, and they'll go hire five new cops, and they'll all be white. <laughs> you know, that's what they'll do. So while there's people out there feeling, trying to draw hope for, oh, things are finally going to change, I think they're kind of jumping the gun here a bit because uh, this isn't really change. It's more like more of the same, only in reverse. Okay, this time it's all black cops beating up on a black guy and that's different that's a whole different narrative than five white cops beating up on a black guy okay uh <laughs> and so even though the cops are expecting riots tonight i guess after they see the video uh, of the beating which they should already have seen it if it was on i mean it's been on youtube so everybody should have already seen it is um for you know i think the protests by and large aren't going to be uh, violent because the police force, the, the, the chief of police has already said uh, she wants those guys to be punished for what they did and she asked people she knows they're going to protest but to do it peacefully, okay so I don't know, I don't think there's going to be anything to worry about as far as violence goes unless there's some asshole in the, in the crowd who wants to make it violent by inserting himself into the protest by throwing rocks or throwing or setting something on fire and getting the police all riled up and the fire department the ambulance you know what i'm saying and it's always these assholes usually right wingers that'll go into these peaceful protests and stir the shit okay gaslight people you know start something and then they can take pictures of it and say see what happened back in 2023 you know this protest you know these people are violent they're you know and it's been them all along. I mean, they've done this before, so it's, there's no reason to think they won't try this now, especially with the political volatility that's in our government these days. Okay, So I would expect that to happen. But I, I'll tell you this, it's just, uh, like I said, it's really, really been a violent week. <laughs> okay, uh, And it almost makes me feel, and I know this is going to sound conspiratorial, but it almost makes me feel like there's a hand behind this whole thing. That there's a hand involved in this okay it feels really weird like just somebody flicked a switch 
on Monday, or over the weekend rather, uh, last weekend, somebody turned a switch on over the weekend and all hell broke loose in this country this week, okay? I, I just feel like it, you know, it's too many things all happening at the same time. You know, maybe it's just another layer of this escalation of, our, of the problem in our country. I don't know, but if it is, we can point to this week being the beginning of that escalation and its continuing increase as time goes on, okay? But we certainly, we certainly have a problem in America that's unique to America only. This is a problem that doesn't exist in other countries of the world, only here. And only here, is it, the uh, solution is there, but we won't reach for it, or at least certain politicians won't reach for it because of their fear of losing money from the gun industry out there that wants to see more sales of guns and more people armed. Uh, I heard that for every American, there's three guns. Okay, for every American, baby, adult, you know what I'm saying? Every single American, there's three guns for every American in this country. That's way, way, way too many guns out there, okay? I mean, you, you, there's no point in even having a military when you have that many people armed to the teeth like that. <laughs> I mean, Jesus. I mean, with all the money we spend in our budget on the military, we ought to be able to cut that in half because we got civilians out there all willing to be a militia. We could probably get rid of the National Guard because everybody wants to be a militia, okay? Well, what these dingbats don't understand is any militia that's formed in this country is answerable to the United States government. That's that's a clause in the Constitution that they haven't read, okay? Or, or you know what I'm saying? Uh, in the <coughs> when you look at the amendments and stuff in the, uh, in the Constitution, you know, it all has to be answerable to the government. No matter if it's uh, an official-looking military kind of militia or just your ordinary backyard assholes coming together with a gun. They're all answerable to the government, okay? Otherwise, you're opening the door to anarchy. You know, people fighting with other people. You know, you're going to have the government fighting itself, okay? So that's why it all has to be answerable to them. But, of course, you can't convince anybody on the right wing that that's the way it is they want to believe it. they just don't want to believe it they only want to believe their uh you know rainbow flowery goddamn idea of the second amendment that's been handed down to them since charlton heston <laughs> okay um so anyway let's let's take a break and This is me. This is me. This is me! This is me. I'm Alex Curtis. I'm a lobsterman in Maine, and this is me. I'm Ruth McLaughlin, and this is me. I'm Eric Hopkins, I'm an artist, and this is me. This. This. This is me. 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 This is me. This is me. This is me. At the end of the journey, the main thing is you, original.
first were not a cult. There is a demonic portal, a satanic portal above the White House. There's ketchup dripping down the wall. And all of a sudden, I feel a shot on my back. Like somebody shot me. I'm not gonna cower. I'm not gonna run from you. Hey, we're gonna have kind of a, a, a sexual get together at one of our homes. You should come. Oh my hell! Ah. I was on crack. Right. <laughs> right. Either way, you can pick up a butt plug or a dildo at Target. Celebrate Father's Day with the best meat America has to offer. I have never been an escort. For Senator Ted Cruz. My pronoun is kiss my ass. My pronouns are Trump one. My pronouns are Reagan and Trump. My pronouns are let's go Brandon. <laughs> Two words for you. Joe Biden is a freaking idiot. Brian, where's your build back better, motherfucker? Are you ready to be called a racist? White supremacy, which, you know, I condone. I mean, I, I condemn. <laughs> I'm I'm not bad at black people. I don't care if Herschel Walker paid to abort endangered baby eagles stand by herschel tonight i am what with many police officers i have trained with fbi that's twenty dollars for crudite this doesn't include the tequila i'm gonna win the election and i will accept that result if they win i should get all the credit and if they lose i should not be blamed at all see that democrat go ding so many people voted on issues that weren't the issues we thought they were voting on you think Princess Diana is still alive? Absolutely. There's not a lot of job market for queer pet literature. How did you know that you know that President Trump... Well, there might be somebody else I'd prefer more. The orange m and does appear very anxious. You can declassify just by saying um, it's declassified, even by thinking about it. Donald's the only boy that can straighten it out, I'll tell you that. I actually saw people trying to leave, um, and, and people leaving early even before he was done. He's still speaking now. Uh, and, and then they I think perhaps a little concerned that the hall, would, the hall would empty out too much. They actually started preventing people from leaving, so now they're no longer... Charlottetown coming to Halifax November 6th to the 18th and St. John November 20th through the 26th. Today is uh, an AP story uh, by Kim Tong Hyung. Uh, it's entitled "North Korea Slams U.S. Over Decision to Send Tanks 
to Ukraine. Uh, Seoul, South Korea, uh, the reporter, said that North Korea condemned on Friday the decision by the U.S. to supply Ukraine with advanced battle tanks uh, to help fight off Russia's invasion, saying Washington is escalating a sinister quote-unquote proxy war aimed at destroying Moscow. The comments by the influential sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un underscored the country's deepening alignment with Russia over the war in Ukraine as it confronts the U.S. and its Asian allies over its own growing nuclear weapons and missile program. North Korea has blamed the United States for the crisis in Ukraine, insisting that the West's uh, quote-unquote hegemonic policy forced Russia to take military action to protect its security interests. It has also used the distraction created by the war to accelerate its own weapons development test firing more than 70 missiles in 2022 alone, including potentially nuclear-capable weapons believed able to target South Korea and the U.S. mainland. Uh, the United States has accused North Korea of sending large supplies of artillery shells and other ammunition to Russia to support its offensive in Ukraine, although the North has repeatedly denied this claim. Kim Yo Jong's comments, carried by the official Korean Central News Agency, came after U.S. President Biden on Wednesday said the United States will send 31 M1 Abrams tanks to Ukraine, uh, reversing months of arguments by Washington that they were too difficult for Ukrainian troops to operate and maintain. The U.S. decision followed Germany's agreement to send 14 Leopard 2 A6 tanks from its own stocks. Kim said the Biden administration was, quote, further crossing the red line, unquote, by sending its main tanks to Ukraine and that the decision reflects a, quote, sinister intention to realize its hegemonic aim by further expanding the proxy war for destroying Russia, unquote. Quote, the U.S. is the arch criminal which possess serious threat and challenge to the strategic security of Russia and pushes the regional situation to the present grave phase, unquote, she said. Quote, I do not doubt that any military hardware the U.S. and the West boast of will be burnt into pieces in the face of the indomitable fighting spirit and might of the heroic Russian army and people, unquote, she said, adding that North Korea will always, quote, stand in the same trench, unquote, with Russia. North Korea is the only nation other than Russia and Syria uh, to recognize the independence of Donetsk and Lushchenko, two Russian-backed separatist regions in eastern Ukraine, and has also hinted at plans to send workers there to help with rebuilding efforts. Uh, okay. So, like good little allies that they are, they send out a press release saying that, oh, you guys are sending them tanks. Some of your best tanks. Okay, you're trying to escalate the war. Uh, no. The tanks are being sent in response to the Russian military escalating the war, okay? They're, they're using uh, better weapons over there now, okay? So, you know, this is the way war is, okay? You've got the allies on this side saying one thing, and you've got the allies over here saying another, okay? But neither side is talking or saying anything about how to stop this, okay? They only want to keep fighting. That's what I'm hearing from here. I mean, you got... Uh, you know, tanks being brought in both sides, okay? So this means now this is going to be, you know, a full, you know, full-on attack on both sides, okay? Ukraine is doubling down here on this thing. Uh, it's dragging out too long. Their, their, peop their population is suffering this winter because of, you know, limited electricity, limited heat, limited food, okay? How long do you think your country is going to last like that? I mean, the war has got to be put to, to bed quick. Uh, in that situation. Um, and by the time it's over, there's not going to be a whole lot left of Ukraine to even want. Because, uh, you know, whoever ends up with it is going to be looking at an expense of trying to rebuild that country that's going to be more than they can afford. <laughs> you know, you think Russia's got money to invest in rebuilding that country? Think again. All right? Think, think again. 
Uh, they don't even have money to, to make their own their military work correct. I mean, Christ, they were using equipment that was 20, 25 years old, for Christ's sake. That's why a lot of the stuff wasn't working. You know, and they've, been, they've been downgrading their military for decades after the Cold War ended. Okay, so they haven't really done a whole lot over there. And so now they're, it's crunch time and they need help from North Korea, which, you know, I'm sure they're getting help from them and anybody else that wants to contribute to, the, to, to Russia. So what we're looking at, it's not just a proxy war, my friends. We're looking at a proxy world war being fought on one country. Everybody's going to Ukraine to fight this war out. It's like everybody coming to play chess against the other side, okay? Uh, but, you know, everybody's centralized the war to this one area because of rules that we've imposed, you know, on a global scale here about how we're supposed to handle such things to avoid having all-out global war. But I don't think those those rules are going to hold their water for very much longer when people get frustrated enough to start saying, that's it. Okay? We can't fight the other side by bottlenecking our forces into one country and duking it out there. We're, we're going to have to cross the line and start swarming that country from all angles. Hence, World War Three. Okay? You know... The, the final step in the battle that's you know will it will result in nuclear weapons like i said you know we could have stopped this thing way back months and months ago okay we could have prevented this by showing uh fierce support for ukraine with our navy being out there in the black sea you know our jets enforcing a no-fly zone okay uh it would have it would have threw the ball back in their court uh, as to what you want to do next. You want to cross the line and start this fucking thing or not? Because right now, you know, we're keeping re Ukraine under our wing, and then whether or not you like it, that's the way it is, okay? Because your war was illegal. The, you know, the UN all agrees on that, okay? You had no reason to do this, and if you want to take this, this illegality here to the next level, be my guest, because we're ready for it, you know? And I, I still say that, you, you know, Putin never would have done it, would have never crossed the line. He'd have tried to play this politically as best he could. But as far as it comes to military leadership, he's not very good at it. Okay, he hasn't done, uh, you know, the, his opening moves and in, in what he'd done in Ukraine all backfired on him. Okay, so he's not a very good military thinker. Uh, his skills are just in, you know, secrecy and, you know, you know, hiding things and, you know, because uh, as a spy or working, you know, as uh, in the, uh, what the hell was, uh, KGB. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 where his skills are. Um, and that doesn't really translate well when you're out in combat. <laughs> okay. Um, so he doesn't really have very good background. Um, and a lot of his leadership, military leadership, wasn't full-heartedly behind this. To begin with okay i don't know how it is now but i can't imagine that they feel any happier with putin these days uh with what he's done i'm surprised that uh, you know we haven't heard any more stories about uh, people trying to assassinate him uh you know it's been a while since we've heard that so you know maybe he's maybe putin's managed to eliminate his detractors i guess i don't know however it is uh you know we still have this problem and it's not going to go away because North Korea wants to rattle its little sword uh, at us and, you know, and scream at the world like, oh, look what the big bad United States is doing and yada, you know what I'm saying? Um, that's been their story all along about us, okay? Yeah, why would it change any different now? You think they're going to be any open-minded about this war? No, they're, they're going to uh, butter the bread that they're uh, getting from uh, Russia uh, because now they're making money by supplying them with weapons. And that's all good for, for North Korea. Okay, so another thing that happened here this week, uh, which outraged the country, which seemed to kind of fall in line with this come out and then all these shootings happen, is, you know, Ron death sentence down in Florida, uh, wanting to block African American history being taught in school. Okay. Uh, <laughs> And not only that, uh, they want to, uh, you know, get rid of books that sit in the classrooms, in the back of the classrooms. They don't want classrooms to have books in there uh, that aren't vetted, I guess. So, you know, they're still going through that down in Florida. 
and it's raising old holy hell down there now because now you got students with their parents coming out and saying uh, this is crossing the line uh, we're gonna sue okay they're gonna sue the state for for that and I, I say hey you should have done this a long time ago because you waited so long and you saw this happening in not just Florida but in other states in the country they're typical red states I mean, it's happening right around here, for Christ's sake. And Maine is a purple state, I guess you want to call it, even though we got a Democrat governor. I mean, it's been more of a back and forth than anything. Anyway, uh, they waited too damn long. I mean, now they're going to have to try to fight this battle against death sentence here over this shit. And I, I wonder, is there a court in that fucking state that's going to be objective enough to be able to make this decision you know in an honest and fair fashion because we know the shit that's been going on in Florida is, is despicable I mean the, the crap that these people in that state put up with is by and far the the worst I've ever seen that state go through the worst okay and I and I lived there in a time when it was a nice state to live in but boy I would not want to live there today I really wouldn't uh, but I'll tell you you know it's just it's sad that Florida has devolved into this mentality uh, where you got crooks around every corner and you got bigots around every other corner and you got Republicans around every other other corner <laughs> that that seem to fill that state now and, and it's it's uh, it's a very depressing uh, thought to think that you know a pretty part of this country which is going to be underwater very soon uh, is going to go down uh, in flames before the water comes in to put it out <laughs> okay and death sentence here is is going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back here as far as what what will happen in florida and he's following true to form uh some people say he's doing this because he wants to be appealing to the trumplicans in the republican party okay that he doesn't really care i mean this was a guy who was briefly a school teacher in his career so he uh, 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 more than anyone I guess would understand that what he's doing is wrong but he obviously doesn't care so I guess he was a lousy teacher I mean anybody that's willing to do the shit that he's doing that's probably why he wasn't a school teacher very long <laughs> okay but he's obviously a bigot I mean it's I mean I'll tell you why because if I was doing something and other people said he's a racist for doing it uh, you know, I wouldn't, I couldn't live with that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I would correct my behavior. Uh, does Ron DeSantis do that? No, he don't care. He stands right in front of the camera and he gives you this matter of fact statement that I'm going to do this and I don't give a fuck if you think I'm a racist. You know, that's, that's how he is. That's, that's what makes him such a vile, despicable animal. Okay. Is that he'll, he'll get in front of the cameras and proudly say, you know, I don't want African American history taught in my schools down here. Period. You know, and I don't care if these people want to sue me; they're not going to win. And I'm going to run for president. You know, I mean, it's the arrogance of it all. And you know, Hitler was like that. You know, he didn't give a fuck who the hell hated him or whatnot. Okay, once he started down that path to become the head of that damn country. Uh, he didn't give a shit how many people he was going to have to jump over or shoot or kill or whatever to get there. As long as he was there, that's all that mattered to him was the goal. Okay? Once he got there, you know, the world suffered in, uh, in, uh, you know, in, as a result of what Germany had went and done. Okay? In this case, if this son of a bitch becomes president, the world will probably suffer there too. <laughs> okay? Because you've got people in the house right now who are eagerly you know uh, rubbing their hands like flies over a dinner okay about uh this this country not being able to honor its you know the debt ceiling okay they want it they want the country to default on it and they can't wait for that fight because they intend to let this country default and brother if that happens i mean you're going to see an economic disaster that's not just going to affect this country, but it's going to resonate around the world, okay? Because, you know, thanks to Bill Clinton, our economies are all linked together in some way or other. And so what happens in one country does trickle around the world and affect the rest. And so 
You know, that's why I say, how is it that the rest of the world can hear this shit coming from the United States, which is the key part of the global economic strength of, the, of you know that we have? Hear these people saying, "We're going to default. We're going to crash our economy here," you know, just so they can get their way by tarnishing Biden. You know, wouldn't that be tantamount to saying, "I'm declaring war on the rest of the world by destroying our economy, so everybody else will fall through"? The, you know, I mean, come on. At what point do you draw the line and say, look, what happens in your country is going to affect us all. We're not going to let that happen. Okay? If you've got people in your country that want to destroy the economy, global economy, we're coming over there with the military and we're going to pull these people out in force. Either you do it or we do it. Okay? Because there's big money involved in this, right? I mean, the corporations here that hate government control, where are they now when you've got people talking about destroying the economy? <laughs> you know? Where the hell, where the hell is, are these people now defending their, their fucking uh, bottom line here when they have to shut their doors and they can't do any more business because nobody can afford it or nobody has the money to, okay? That's why I say what these, what these Republicans are doing is tantamount to declaring war on the rest of the world here. So, look, I mean, we can all sit back and just ignore the threats, okay, from the right wing and wait till the last minute to see whether they follow through on it. Or we can listen to how they are now, which, you know, a lot of us are really surprised at what's coming out of that party there these, these days. We can listen to these people now, know that they're insane, and say, look, we're not going to wait. We're going to stop these fuckers now, okay? We're going to do what we can now to stop them from getting anywhere near that fucking debate, okay? We're going to do something legally or whatever, get to the president and find a way for him to just simply over overturn anything that the Congress does and keep the country rolling, okay? We have to make the Congress simply uh, useless while they're in there, okay? Because those people have no interest but their own in what they do there now, okay? That's, that's really all it is. So that's why I say I think it's very important uh, for, for us to recognize the assholes in the party like DeSantis and say, look, that's it. We gave you enough chances to correct your behavior, and you didn't do it. So now we're going to step in and correct it for you. We're going to start taking away uh, your ability to get things done, okay? Until you run out the clock and you're gone out of here, that's the way it's going to be. And that's really the only way you can be. You've got to deprive these people of their ability to harm the country, because that's what they want to do. Um... They certainly ain't on the side of anybody that I can think of other than their own uh, to essentially, uh, you know, push forward their agenda. And I think we all know, even those of us who really don't follow politics that well, uh, can kind of see the handwriting on the wall that this is obviously a tit-for-tat kind of uh, method of the way that Trumplicans want to do things because of you know, their their inability to accept, you know, that they lost the White House, okay, um, and it's still, they're still getting their marching orders from Trump, even though they don't want Trump as part of the goddamn uh, Republican Party. I mean, hell, you got uh, just, uh, what is it, today here, uh, Trump screaming out rotten hell to the investigation, investigations into the truth social video binge that he, uh, he ranted about, uh, and if you didn't uh, hear about it, here, let me, uh, let me uh, read here this. Uh, it says, uh, former Tr President Trump on Friday, today, posted several videos in his Truth Social platform, uh, posts, by the way, and videos that he knew would not go up on Facebook, since Facebook let him back into the system now. Um, but he, they, but they gave him stipulations that you can stay here until, but you can't do this, this, and this. okay. So he had to go back to his Truth Social platform to put this shit in there, okay, uh, including one in which he angrily ranted about being investigated for his uh, 2016 campaign, multiple contacts with Russian agents, okay. In the video, Trump called out Charles uh, McGonagall, a former former special agent in charge of counterintelligence in the FBI's New York field office, who was arrested last week for his work helping Kremlin-aligned oligarch Oleg Deripaska try to evade sanctions. Quote, the FBI after me for the Russia 
uh, Russia hoax long before my election as president uh, was just arrested for taking money from Russia. Russia, Russia, unquote, Trump fumed. Quote, may he rot in hell, unquote. In fact, there is no indication that McGonagall was the lead investigator into the Trump campaign's Russian lies. Uh, what's more, the oligarch from uh, whom McGonagall is accused of helping is the same oligarch whose deep ties to former Trump campaign chairman Paul uh, Manafort created suspicions that Trump's campaign might have been directly working with Kremlin agents to sabotage Democratic rival Hillary Clinton's campaign. A Senate Intelligence Committee report released in 2020 found that Manafort's high-level access and willingness to share information with individuals closely affiliated with the Russian intelligence services, particularly uh, Kilmink and associates of Oleg uh, Derespaka, represented a grave counterintelligence threat. Uh, so you see that, you know, <laughs> this is this is the uh, the uh, uh, Republican leadership, Trump. Okay, you can laugh all you want about it, but that's what you know. They that's what they look at him as. He's he's still the kingmaker, as it were, uh, in that party. Uh, and even though he's under investigation for all kinds of you know slimy things and everything, uh, it matters not to the right wing. It does. It just doesn't. It doesn't matter. Not in today's right wing. It doesn't matter. Okay, they'll take whatever they can get uh, as long as it leads to the fall of the country. And the more damage he does to America, in, in whatever way, the better they like it. So never count on Republicans to be at your side uh, when it comes to bad times. They will always kick the legs out from under you whenever times are bad, and they will stand there waiting for you to try to get up and knock you down again. Just like the police, uh, those five policemen did to that uh, young man uh, this week. Okay, so everybody... Hope you have a great weekend. Okay? Take care out there. Uh, subscribe and comment. And uh, keep your ears open for COVID-19 news. Uh, keep note, in fact, that places are asking people, I think, you know, volunteering to wear their masks more often now. I'm trying to get a, a grip on this, uh, new out, uh, this new spread of it here. Um, and treat each other kindly out there. No more, you know... I, I say no more fighting, and yet we had a whole week of nothing but. So, you know, I think we need to double down here on our efforts to try to keep peace in this country, okay? Uh, it's, it's more important than the okay? Because anger spreads. It's like a virus. Uh, but also, good feelings spread too. It may take a while for people to understand what that they're, they're, they're seeing good behavior. I mean, some people are probably so used to fighting and, uh, and anger all the time that they won't recognize right off when somebody does something good for them. So, uh, you know, it takes a little more frequency of it before people start to get feel safe around it. So keep trying. Keep trying, people. It's not the end of the world yet. <laughs> okay, even though that day is coming. But uh, we can either go out, you know, as uh, bandits here and uh, devils, or we can uh, go out with a little dignity and a little bit of pride here in ourselves. Uh, that we tried to do the right thing. Take care, everybody.